finishing procedures. Welcome to the finishing procedures module. The objectives of this presentation are to learn how to handle and to finish each material group in general. It is important to know the differences in the manufacturing process or the machining process in each material group. You will learn which instruments and tools may be used to machine each individual material group. Following the overview of the four material groups in general, we will go into detail about the materials. Serik Tassira, IPS Emax CAD, Serik MTL Zirconia, Katana Avencia, IPS Atelio CAD, and show you step by step why and how the materials are to be processed in this way. Let's take a look at the four main groups of materials. The first group, silicate ceramics. The second, zirconia. The third group, hybrid ceramics. And the fourth group, acrylates. Basically, the group of silicate ceramics is probably the most inhomogeneous and also the most diverse group since there are differences in the processing of the individual materials, especially with regard to the necessary glaze or crystallization in the kiln. In the group of zircons, this looks somewhat simpler. To summarize, a sintering process in the kiln is always necessary. However, a stain and glaze firing is optional. In both groups of hybrid ceramics and acrylates, things look very simple. Both material groups are not allowed to go into the kiln. Now let's take a closer look at the individual groups and start with this large group of silicate ceramics. Basically, silicate ceramics are heat sensitive and they are always wet ground. After the grinding process in the prime mill is finished, these materials continue to be processed with water cooling if possible. Fine grit diamonds should be used and the number of rotations should not exceed 10,000 rotations per minute. Therefore, the tapping point is leveled with moderate contract pressure using a fine grit diamond under water cooling and the surface of the crown is smoothened and, if necessary, finished. Afterwards, the workpiece is cleaned with a steam jet device. The described workflow is the same for all silicate ceramics. Whether glaze firing or crystallization firing is mandatory is up to the individual and depends on the selected workpiece or material. Basically, Silicate ceramics can always be fired, they can always be stained and glazed. Silicate ceramics can only be polished. There are many manufacturers and suppliers who offer instruments for the handpiece. Here, the company Meisinger is only mentioned as an example of the shape of the diamond that can be used to remove and level the tapping point. However, it is important that a fine-grained diamond is used. If the silicate ceramic is only polished following the grinding process, then it is also very important here that heat development on the material surface and in the material is avoided. Therefore, whenever possible, a handpiece with water cooling should be used to polish silicate ceramics. If this is not possible, it is an option to place a vessel of cold water at the workstation and cool the ceramic in this cold water between the individual polishing steps. To avoid heat, the contact pressure should never be too strong and the number of rotations should not exceed 10,000 rotations per minute. The polishers should only have brief contact with the material surface and short strokes should be used. 
If the material is only polished, it is of the utmost importance that the surface of the material is cured and compacted by the polishing process. At the end of the polishing process, the surface should appear smooth and shiny. To achieve this condition, it is usually sufficient to work with silicone polishers in descending grain size. To ensure the most time-saving and efficient surface finishing polishing, some manufacturers offer special instrument kits. The Meisinger Company is mentioned here as an example. The Meisinger Company is mentioned here as an example. As a practitioner, you will find many specialized kits here. The advantage is that the instrument designations are lasered on these sets, which makes reordering the instruments very easy. If the restoration is to be glazed, there are two options. The first option is to use a glaze spray. The application of spray. It is important to ensure that the adhesive surfaces of the restoration are well covered so that no glaze gets onto the adhesive surfaces. This can be done very easily with a kneadable silicone, which can be removed later without leaving any residue. Glaze sprays must be shaken very thoroughly before use and therefore mixed thoroughly. This should be done for at least one minute. Then spray the glaze spray onto the surface of the restoration from a distance of about 10 centimeters with short bursts. It is essential to ensure that this glaze layer does not become too thick. In practice, you apply one layer of glaze spray per surface, wait a short time for the solvent to evaporate, and then apply a second layer with short sprays from a distance of 10 centimeters. What remains is a slightly frosty looking surface with an even glaze application. Now the restoration is best held with diamond tweezers in the area of the proximal contacts and the kneadable silicone is removed from the inner surfaces. The second option is to paint and glaze with universal colors. Here it is important to always stay within one system. The stains and glaze masses of one system should always be used together. A separate brush should also be used for each color system. Here it is important to know that this brush should never be cleaned with water. It should be cleaned with the liquid belonging to the system and washed out with it. It is important to use CTE, coefficient of thermal expansion, neutral colors like universal stains for ceramics. There are different systems from different manufacturers. The universal stains from the company Densplite Serona should be mentioned, or the stains from the company Kurare Noritaka CZR FC Paste Stain. Both are universal stain systems that can be used, for example, for the individualization and glazing of silicate ceramics. One difference in handling between the two materials is the removal from the colour pots. The colours from Densply Serona have to be thoroughly mixed with the liquid on top of the colour surface. The colours from Kurare Noritaka FC Paste Stain are totally different. The liquid on the paint surface must be tipped off and should not be removed with it or stirred in under any circumstances. The pot is held at a slight angle and the paint is removed with a clean plastic spatula. A word about the colours of the company Ivoclar Vivident, which are specially designed for glazing and painting Emacs. These colours may only be used 
for the individualization and glazing of Emacs. However, it is possible to glaze Emacs with other universal CTE neutral ceramic stains and glaze colors. In practical terms, the inner surfaces of the crown do not necessarily have to be covered with a silicone while painting and glazing with the colors. For example, the crown can be held with a special tweezer while the surface is painted and glazed with a brush. Here again, it is important to pay close attention that neither the stains nor the glazing material are applied to the inner surfaces of the latter adhesive surface in the inner surface of the restoration. Glazed material would prevent an adhesive bond to the ceramic. The procedure depends on individual preference. First, the crown can be painted with the stains and then the glazing material can be applied. It is also possible to mix the stains with the glazing material and apply them together. The finished glazed crown is fired in the kiln according to the material manufacturer's instructions and the firing protocol. If you work with the speed fire kiln, this protocol for each material is saved and predefined. After the adhesive looting has been completed, it is important to ensure that the intraoral finishing is carried out under good water cooling and with less contact pressure. Any interfering contacts should be ground with a fine grain diamond. And finally, any area that has been processed with a fine grain diamond should also be polished to a high gloss again. Here too, individual sets with silicone polishers in descending grain size are available from different manufacturers. There are some interesting combinations of instruments from the Meisinger company. We will now move on to the second group of materials and take a closer look at the manufacturing process of zirconia. We focus on the new material group of high translucent and high speed zirconia. With the Prime Mill and Speedfire Ensemble, we have equipment at our disposal with which we can produce zirconia chair side with high speed. In the super fast milling mode in the Prime Mill, it is possible to finish milling a single zirconia crown in less than five minutes. The subsequent sintering program in the Speedfire takes only 18 minutes for one crown. The optional glaze firing in the Speedfire takes only about nine minutes. What materials are these high translucent high speed zirconia? Currently on the market are Seric MTL zirconia from Densply Serona or Katana STML zirconia from Corare Noritaka. These two materials are very similar in their material composition and therefore also in their processing. Both are highly aesthetic, highly translucent zircons with a multi-layer color gradient in the block, which can be sintered at high speed and are therefore particularly suitable for chair side applications. For a more detailed description of the material, please refer to the materials classification module. The term high speed zirconia refers to the very fast milling process, but primarily to the greatly shortened sintering process. A single crown can be sintered within 18 minutes and a bridge can be sintered in about 33 minutes. The glazing process takes nine to 10 minutes. Let us now take a closer look at the manufacturing process. Here it is very important to consider the two different stages of zirconia as different workpieces 
with different requirements. For example, it is essential to protect the freshly milled white restoration from grease contamination and from contamination with silicate particles before sintering. Because this white restoration is like a sponge, it should only be processed dry and should only be touched with gloves. The tooth color restoration after the sintering process should be protected from heat and should be only handled wet. So remember, zirconium should always be milled dry. At the end of the milling process, the tapping point is removed and leveled with a carbide instrument with a maximum of 10,000 rotations per minute. The whiting could now be further processed dry so there would be the possibility to carve or also polish the surface with special instruments. Again, care should be taken not to use polishing instruments that may contain silicate particles. The crown should then be cleaned dry. This can be done with a dry brush or with oil-free compressed air. It is important to remove any dust residues from the surface both outside and inside. Please beware. Zirconia dust is unhealthy. Work with a suction or wear a mask. We would like to make it very clear once again that it is of the utmost importance to only work on the whiting with carbide drills. Diamond instruments are often silicate bonded, which could lead to a subsequent reduction in the aesthetic appearance of the finished restoration. For example, the translucency or the crown suffers can get opaque spots or in the worst case appear very opaque overall. It is important to always work the whiting dry. For sintering, the whiting is placed on the occlusal surface on the upper door seal of the speedfire. The restoration margins should not come into contact with the upper door seal or the resting surface of the kiln, as the shrinkage process during sintering could lead to marginal inaccuracies. It is important that the crown with the occlusal surface is actually placed on the bare upper door seal. Under no circumstances should a fiberglass mat be used. Under no circumstances should the restoration be placed in speed paste or placed on firing pins. After completion of the sintering program, the cooling time indicated by the unit must be strictly observed. Avoid touching the very hot restoration with a cold instrument. This could lead to microfractures. After the cooling time in the Speedfire Kiln program has elapsed, the crown should be grasped with tweezers and placed on the surface in front of the Speedfire Kiln to cool for another five minutes. In contrast to the whiting, the sintered restoration can be processed with diamond burrs, preferably fine grain diamond burrs. It should now be noted that water cooling should definitely be used during processing. Sintered zirconia should never be machined with carbide drills and without water cooling. If the processing is only possible dry, there are special instruments that can be recommended for dry processing of zirconia with the handpiece. During the intraoral try-in, zirconia should be processed with fine grain diamonds and water cooling. After the try-in, the workpiece has to be disinfected 
with high percent alcohol and dried with air. Now the finalization starts. Basically there are two procedures available for this. Polishing on the one hand and staining and glazing on the other hand. When polishing it is important to ensure that the workpiece does not overheat during processing. Therefore, a technique handpiece with water cooling is recommended here as well. In principle, work should be carried out with moderate pressure and short strokes, and contact with the workpiece should be briefly interrupted by the polisher so that excessive heat is not generated. It is important to ensure that no polishing step is skipped in order to obtain a really smooth surface. This is important for maximum protection of the antagonist. If glaze is chosen to finalize the restoration, there are basically two options available. Spray glaze can be used or stains and glaze materials can also be used. Let us now take a look at the workflow when using the spray glaze. First, the outside of the restoration is sandblasted with aluminium corundum with a grain size of 50 microns. This leads to a better adhesion of the glazing material to the surface of the restoration. However, it is recommended to re-smooth the surface with a polisher in the area of the contact points in order to prevent damage to the antagonist. In the course of the wearing time of the restoration, it is assumed that the glaze will reduce over time. It is recommended to protect the inner surfaces of the restoration from the glaze. This can be done with a kneadable special grease-free silicone or the restoration can also be held in place with tweezers. There are special crown tweezers that can be clamped into the inner surfaces of the restoration. It is important to prevent glaze spray from getting onto the inner surface of the restoration because areas that are glazed are later no longer available for the adhesive bond. It is very important that the glaze spray is thoroughly mixed before use. This is done by shaking. The spray can should be shaken for one minute. Now an even thin layer is applied to the surface of the restoration by short even sprays. The first coat is allowed to air dry for about 10 seconds and then a second coat is applied in the same way. This should also dry for 10 seconds. A slightly frosty surface remains with a glaze layer that is not too thick. The silicone is then removed from the inner surface of the restoration and the restoration is held in place at the proximal contacts with diamond tipped tweezers. The procedure for painting and glazing with glazing material looks relatively similar. Here too the restoration is sandblasted on the outside. Again it is necessary to polish the contact points and it is an optional variant to protect the inner surfaces again with silicone or to hold them in place with tweezers. There are special crown tweezers that can be clamped into the inner surfaces of the restoration. Now the surface to be glazed is wetted with the liquid belonging to the color system. The restoration is individualized with stains. Then the glazing material is applied. Different procedures are possible here. 
First, only the stains can be applied. These are then fixed by a glaze firing and then the glaze firing material is applied in a second glaze firing. It is also possible to apply the stains together with the glaze so that they mix with each other and are fixed in a common glaze firing. Which colors can we use? Universal stains that are CTE neutral should be used. If different colors are used, it is important not to mix them. Please always keep them in one system. The same applies to the brushes. The brush should also only ever be used for one system and the liquid belonging to the system should be used to clean the brushes. The brush is washed in plenty of this liquid and then wiped dry on an absorbent cloth. Once the restoration has been painted and glazed, it is prepared for glaze firing in the speed fire kiln. For this purpose, we use speed paste from Densply Serona. This is used to fill the inner surface of the restoration, but not to fill over the edge in order to stabilize the restoration on the glaze support pins or only on a glass fiber mat. The restoration fixed and stabilized on the glaze pin is now placed on the upper door seal of the speed fire kiln and the glazing process can be started on the selection menu. Once the glazing process is finished, we recommend waiting until the time has counted down to zero. Only now should the restoration be removed with tweezers. The very cold tweezers should not touch the very hot restoration if possible. The restoration can be touched at the glaze support and then placed on the fan area in front of the kiln to cool down completely. This complete cooling time is approximately three minutes. If the restoration has to be processed intraorally after adhesive looting, it is important to ensure that this is always done with water cooling. The rough processing, such as the removal of interfering contacts, can be carried out with fine-grained diamonds and the subsequent polishing is then mandatory and should be carried out with special silicone polishers for zirconia. Let us now take a look at the manufacturing process of hybrid ceramics. They must always be wet ground and must never be placed in the kiln. The finishing is only done by polishing. Characterization can optionally be achieved by composite stains, which are not subjected to glaze firing in the kiln. Finishing. Slide 38. Therefore, there are different polishing systems for hybrid ceramics. Here too, some manufacturers have specialized and provided a compilation of instruments in practical stands. An important point. Avoid heat development during polishing to avoid microfractures. Therefore, short strokes and short contact phases should be used with a moderate polishing pressure. It is important to carry out the polishing carefully so that no surface marks remain on the surface and the entire restoration is polished to a high gloss. Once the restoration has been adhesively looted, it is essential to always work wet and the surface should be brought back to a high gloss after processing with a fine-grained diamond using silicone polishers of a suitable 
grain size. The processing of acrylics is similarly simple. Here too, wet grinding is always used. It should be noted in the clinical workflow that these grinding times can often be very long. For example, for a bridge with three units, about 50 minutes of grinding time should be planned. Just as with hybrid ceramics, PMMAs are of course not allowed in the kiln and finalization is only done by polishing. Here too, it is important to avoid excessive heat development in the material. There are also special kits from various manufacturers for working on PMMA. Care should be taken never to use the instruments with too much pressure and try to ensure short contacts of the instruments with the restoration surface. The surface should be completely polished to a high gloss. Special silicone polishers can be used here. A goat hair brush with special polishing pastes and finally a cotton buff can also produce very nice results very quickly. The individualization of PMMA temporaries is usually done by a structural surface treatment. For this purpose there are also special kits with beautiful instruments such as cutting discs and fine toothed burrs. PMMA temporaries are intended for long-term use. They can be sandblasted. Afterwards they simply need to be rinsed under running water or cleaned with a steam jet. They are compatible with all temporary cements. Here it is important to ensure that a temporary cement without eugen oil is used so as not to jeopardize the subsequent adhesive looting of the definitive ceramic restoration later. Long-term temporaries should remain in situ for at least three months. For example, the material VetaCAD Temp can remain in situ for up to three years. It is necessary to check these long-term temporaries for tightness at regular intervals.